to harnessing the power of intent for your SEO. My name is Morty Oberstein, I'm the head of SEO branding at Wix, and we have a wonderful little webinar for you. Before we go around the horn and introduce our crew to you for today's webinar, I just want to go through the quick format. We're going to start off, well, we're going to start with a little bit of a sneak peek and surprise for you. We'll get to that in a, in a moment. We're going to start off with Marcus Tober from Semrush presenting all about user intent. We'll then have a short little panel discussion where we dive into what Marcus talked about, and then we'll be taking questions from you. So if you notice, there's a Q&A section in the Zoom setup. Throw all of your questions into there. At the end, we'll get to as many as we possibly can. We'll also have some moderators trying to help you out throughout the webinar. There is no such thing as a silly question. So please, whatever questions you have, we will be happy to get as many as you possibly can. So do not censor yourself in terms of the content that you ask around keyword intent and how to leverage that. Now, let's go around the horn. Today, we have with us the head of communica SEO communications at Wix, Crystal Carter, and Marcus Tober, who is an absolute legend. He's working at so much of their enterprise product. I will just say this, Marcus is one of the founding fathers of SEO in my mind, because he started to create enterprise SEO tools. One of the first people to do that. Crystal, Marcus, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me too. Pleasure. I'm excited. Crystal, what do you do here at Wix? I am the head of SEO communications, so I communicate about SEO. <laughs> <laughs> which is what you're literally doing here now so oh my gosh look at we're doing it right now incidents um and the, and the, and one of the great things about about the role is that i get a really good opportunity to talk to fantastic people like marcus um and and to talk about uh fantastic tools like semrush uh to folks at wix uh and and i'm really excited to hear more about that today definitely gonna get into that and marcus i know you're over at semrush you want to share with us what you do there yeah, I'm heading the enterprise solutions department. So I just joined Semrush in January. Uh, but actually the goal really is to like build great solutions on top of Semrush, which already is like the perfect foundation, especially towards larger enterprise companies. Yeah, and it's super yes, exciting. <laughs> it is. And Semrush is an absolutely fabulous tool, which is why before we get into the actual um, deep diving into the keyword intent around um, SEO, have a little bit of a surprise for our Wix folks here. I'm gonna share my screen really quickly because I'm happy to say that coming soon in the near future, in the dev world when you're developing a tool, the near future is, well, relative. There is going to be a SEMrush integration right in Wix for your Wix sites. You'll have a new way to access keywords and deeper metrics around keywords in your initial SEO setup. So. When you are setting up your, your Wix site and you go through your SEO setup checklist, one of the steps in there is choosing keywords to focus on for your website. In the near future, you will have an in-platform connection to SEMrush, which you can see in the screenshot here, that will give you access to keyword suggestions from SEMrush directly. Now, what's amazing is that SEMrush has a fantastic algorithm, which they recently updated around this, to offer you the best solutions or the best keywords that align with what you want to do for your website. So what you would do is you would type in the topic that your website deals with. In the example here, we have hip hop. You can choose a region. For example, here we're showing um, uh, the uh, southern part of France. And you get all sorts of keywords relevant to that topic and to that region. And you get all sorts of metrics like uh, search volume. How many people on average or in general are searching for that particular term each and every month in that region? What is the trend? Is that are people searching for that keyword or that topic more often? Is that a hard keyword to rank for? And which we're gonna get into today, what is the intent behind the keyword? Is it an informational keyword, commercial keyword? And if you're confused about what that might mean, well, that's why Marcus is here. So I'm gonna throw it over to Marcus. Look for this soon inside of the Wix platform. Very excited to have SEMrush inside of Wix and the keyword intent part of the equation that you, you, our users will be able to have access to. So Marcus, how does keyword intent work for search? Yes, <laughs> I'm super excited to talk about keyword intent because that's the topic um, I, I really like to talk about because 
so many people talk about keywords and rankings and is my landing page optimized and all these kinds of things, but often they, under, they do not understand that the searcher has different intents, especially throughout the whole customer journey. And keyword intent is, is really one of the um, most important um, like segments that you should use to create a good uh, content strategy, to look at your success, to even analyze the competition, because not every competitor based on the customer journey is a competitor in that kind of sense. All right, yeah, I mean, Morty like announced me, but I mean, I'm Marcus Tober heading uh, so much enterprise uh, solutions um, unit, and I'm I'm an SEO since like 22 years. Um, yeah, what is keyword intent and why is it important? Um, so keyword intent is the notion of when what people expect to find when they use search engines. And it's a concept that, that Google kind of like made more popular in 2016 already, like many years ago, when they said like, hey, um, we have a concept we call micro moments. And because we as a search engine, we want to deliver the best results based on, hey, I have um, things like I want to know moments or I want to go moments, I want to do, I want to buy. And this is a concept that Google kind of like made uh, like public. And based on this, uh, SEMrush has built um, the, the keyword intent, which is very important because it is a good reflection of um, where people are and what people uh, look for in, in the whole customer journey. But let me explain a couple more details about the keyword intent in, in, in general. So the first one is informational. So this is the, the, the very broad one. When, when people look for a specific question or general information, it could be like typically a question searches, like how to tie a tie, what are capers or who's signing, uh, singing at the Super Bowl. And this is something you can really multiply because whenever people have some sort of problem, they open Google and they do a search. And this is typically information searches. But information searches can be also a little bit more specific. People maybe search for what is keyword intent or definition of SEO or how to build a website. And this is something you should keep in mind because informational searches are really like, like important, you know, how to start um, getting more insights from your customers and how actually to start um, being more visible in the whole customer journey. Then there are navigational keywords. Um, when you look at navigational keywords, you often think of just brand searches, but this is not true. When, when the searcher has a certain intent to find a specific website or physical location or certain thing like, like, a, like a login page, this is often when a searcher is maybe not in the know or maybe too lazy to kind of go to the website and just you know, go to this specific page. So for example, eBay login has a very high search volume or Facebook login. So these are typical informational searches, but it could also be like like uh, Obama's Twitter account and, and so on. This is something we also define um, within um, our uh, keyword tools. Um, then we have commercial intent. Um, when people search for a specific brand or a specific service, but also like for typical co comparisons or best of searches, the typical listicle pages. So like iPad Air versus iPad Mini or on this office chairs and, and all that stuff. So this is important uh, because there's one uh, last segment, which is transactional, because this is even closer to the transaction when, when people already have decided like, hey, I know now I wanna buy an iPad Air, not the iPad Mini. I'm going to search uh, on uh, um, like iPad Air deals or iPad Air for cheap or iPad Air 2020 because I don't want to buy the newest one. I want to buy like an older one or where to buy a kayak. But transactional searches are not just for uh, like purchasing products. They're also like there for completing actions. So if you do not uh, like, like sell products, but you offer services or offer something else, it could also be like a Among Us download or near construction homes near me. So please keep this in mind. And if you look at all the whole like um, segmentation of, of keyword intent, uh, we could also take a look at like um, how keyword intent plays an important role from the customer journey perspective. Because if you look at it from a funnel perspective, like awareness and interest, they have like the uh, highest search volume. Um, so that means like in, in, in this area, people are very unsure what they actually really want. If, if it's like a certain product, if it's like something else, or if it's just general information. And this is something where you see now in the segmentation, like information searches, they have the highest search volume. Then you have commercial searches, more like in the interest and consideration phase. Uh, and then we have transaction searches who are much closer to the, uh, to the transaction. And often companies, they, they, they mistake like the segmentations by, okay, transaction searches, they you know, deliver 
um, the highest conversion rates. We are trying to focus from the content perspective primarily on transactional searches, but they will miss out the majority of searches um, the consumer or potential consumer does um, uh, 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 because in that moment when you are in the awareness interest phase, this is where you have more search volume and this is where if you do not get the customer, it's more like uh, it's more unlikely that you get um, the sale in the end. So let me give you one example. So think about the user and the intent, right? So, you know, we are here in, in this webinar. Um, so people search for how to build a website. So many people search it every month because they, they want to know. And if Wix want to be uh, relevant for how to build a website, they can't just have their, their um, landing page with a purchase button, like here, see the prices and, you know, let's, let's go and create your website. It's like people have different kinds of searches. And in this list, it's going what you are going to get in, in uh, a new CMS in Wix very soon, uh, like different types of searches with different intents. And how to build a website is a typical informational query. And if you want to be relevant for informational queries, there are certain things you should understand that people are looking for structured content. They look often for lists. People have gotten very lazy. They don't want to read long text. They want to have like structured content, like um, step one, two, three, or they want to have like, like um, frequently asked questions, like structured content in that kind of sense, because they want to learn very quickly how to build a website and, and like, I don't know, like, like how to learn all these kinds of things. And this is what Wix actually did. And if you look at all these different types of queries, even here for the commercial query website builder, you have much higher search volume than for the informational query, like how to build a website. And then you have even navigation queries like Wix website builder with a decent search volume as well. And, and this is interesting because if you look at, and it's not just to please like uh, 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 Crystal and Morty here, <laughs> um, it's, it's because what Wix really actually did here is they've created uh, what's called a holistic content um, landing page. So that means based on the different types of the searchers and tents um, th that people want to learn how to build a website, people want to understand um, how all these steps work. Um, people really want to kind of like understand what Wix is offering in terms of product. They create, created one like uh, holistic connected experience. And the interesting thing is, again, so the intent of keywords is really dominating like what, what Google is showing because Google is, 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 is very much um, like, 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 uh, uh, like, like, um, uh, like, I mean, Google's mission is to discover the best content, right? So Google really wants to make sure that not websites are ranking that just have keywords on their page or like use the keyword and title tag. So it's, it's really important that, that the, the searcher in the end really finds as fast as possible what he was intended to, to, um, to, to look for. So if you look at the commercial intent, website builder and the information intent, how to build a website, you even see that the results look very different. Whereas on the commercial intent side, you mostly have like really uh, product pages because because Google understands this is like a searcher that, that wants to build a website. And I mean, there are lots of like um, free, but also lots of really good commercial services. So Wix ranks you on number one. And if you look for the information intent, how to build a website, you see the first one is, is a feature snippet. You have point one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, how to create a website. That's often like, like a good intriguing a piece for the user to see, okay, this is maybe even answering my question, or I want to know, and voila, also Wix is ranking on number one here, but we have like two different intents. If you look at the rest of the results, this is really interesting, is if you just purely look at the rankings, Wix is the only website that is able to rank for both, for the commercial and for the informational query. Everyone else is different. On the, on the left side here for the website builder, the commercial intent, we primarily have um, product offerings like uh, GoDaddy, Wix, uh, Squarespace, et cetera. And on the right side, for the more informational intent query, we have mostly content pages, like um, like, like long form content pages. So you see here now, it's, it's not just the case that you can only wing for one intent. If you create a holistic experience, you can cover the customer journey on a much broader scale. So you can intrigue the customer, comes to your website, he can learn. But at the same time, once you have learned enough, he can even convert on your website, which is actually super cool and not very common. 
Um, to give a little bit more background in terms of um, the distribution of keywords by intent based on um, our study that we made just recently, uh, informational um, queries, um, the majority of the queries people do. If you look at then commercial and transactional queries, um, commercial queries are at 10%, transactional are like almost 20%. And navigation are like the minority of just 10 percent here so keep this in mind because if you create content you should always make sure that you cover enough um, of like information intent as well because this is where you can capture a lot of search volume which brings me to search volume by intent so search volume by intent means we at samrush we measure like how many people search on an average basis like on, a, on an annual basis per average um, certain keywords and if you look at information intent it's still in the majority with 53% of all searches on our large keyword database. And then you have here like commercial, which is now in the minority here with 8.5% in terms of search volume because it's often like long tail queries. It's like um, um, like best iPad Air um, online or best iPad Air deals for cheap or something like this. So super close to the transaction, so lower search volume. Then you have transactional queries, 16% uh, and navigational queries here with 21% compared to the 10% we had before. And the reason is very simple because if you have like, like lots of brands, like if people just search for a brand like, like Wix or Nike or Facebook or whatever, this is typically uh, triggering the high search volume, which makes up this 21% here. So um, yeah, and that brings me to a good point because information searches, they represent the majority of searches. And yeah, I mean, there's something uh, that's actually really cool what Google is doing. Um, there's a website thing with Google. It's like it's like like a blog uh, where Google on a regular basis is publishing um, studies and really like pretty good insights. And there was one study um, about the purest consumer where Google gave some pretty interesting insights about growth in certain areas for mobile searches. And for this webinar, I think that's really cool because um, these numbers are from like 2017, so they're not from today, but important is uh, about the growth. So the growth between like uh, within the two year um, time frame. And if you look at this, um, even small decisions are researched like best umbrellas within two years had a 140% growth or best travel accessories had a 110% growth or best toothbrush over 100% growth which is interesting. So people become more aware of how I can use uh, search engines to like help me in making my decision. I don't need to go into like a physical location that was even before the pandemic. So I can just use uh, Google search and look at like certain um, websites that do give me some good uh, options for like best and then product. And if you then look at uh, mobile searches that have like underscore ideas, that they also have grown within a two year time frame of over 55%. That's really like everything, like bathroom remodel ideas, gender reveal ideas, graduation party ideas. And this is interesting because it's growing fast. And if you look at these ty different types of queries, look at this. And this is something you're going to get very soon in, in, um, in, 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 in in your preferred CMS. <laughs> um, so if, if you look at this, so you get the search volume and you get the intent and this is interesting because you see like best and then product, it's typically a commercial query. So like I said, much closer to the transaction, but often with like decent search volume. But the information queries, all the idea stuff, this has, as you can see here, very high search volume. And if you are, for example, um, a bathroom store that sells bathroom accessories, you know, sinks and, and uh, bathtubs and, and whatever, uh, you really need to think about what does the user searches like much, much uh, more before he's even considering a certain product and bathroom remodel ideas would be a perfect idea if you're like a shop uh, to create as content uh, to kind of like um, get interested um, potential consumers on your website and like, like really try to help the user to find um, good information like how to remodel the bathroom and of course you can like advertise your products and try to make like a good upsell here. So this is really like how you should think about the customer journey. So um, knowing this, this is not just the only thing that you get as benefit if you think about uh, keyword intent and kind of like how you can like create targeted content. Often if you, if you create um, 
content for the different types in the customer journey. You also have like much more improved conversion rates on your transactional pages. So look at the, the Wix's homepage that is able to rank for um, informational commercial uh, navigational queries. So by, by, by creating more holistic content, you can improve the conversion rates and you can kind of like reduce the bounce rates as, as another pretty good um, benefit here. Sure, you also create more page views because like if you have like not just one piece of content if for the whole customer journey, you maybe even produce more piece of content because you know what is like a search like more on the informational stage and like search more on the transactional stage. If you are like a shop, you can create more content. You can even create more page views. Um, then your answer boxes, which is pretty interesting. So think about the example I was showing like with Google search results, feature snippets or like um, these answer boxes that are often below organic. Um, this is something you can trigger if you, for example, have FAQs on your page and you use the schema.org integration for the FAQ markup. So you can even trigger these answer boxes, which in increases your screen equity within Google search. Sure, the, the, the next benefit is to reach a wider audience. Why? Because um, if you are like purely focused on like selling your products or services in that moment, when you also create like informational content, doesn't mean like everyone coming to your page is becoming a customer, but um, you can increase your brand awareness. You can increase the customer happiness. And maybe at some point, uh, the, the, the person that like visited your page for like bathroom remodel ideas is going to remember your brand and coming to your website at the, at the later stage. And yeah, sure, of course, more, much more traffic. So how can you do this? Um, like in, in our keyword magic tool in SEMrush, it's, it's quite simple. Um, the, the magic tool works in a way that it's like a pivot table. You have an idea. So this one is for coffee roaster. And then you see all the results. And next to the results, you see the intent, which is actually quite cool because you can filter very quickly um, like, like certain things. Like if you want to create um, a piece of content, you should focus on informational queries. If you are a shop and you want to understand what kind of keywords do users need, uh, users search to be like more ready for the, the purchase, you should filter by transactional or by commercial intent, which is cool. So the, which you can do here. The next one, which I really love is um, you can filter by questions. Why? If you really want to understand what keeps your potential consumer up at night, what are they searching? What are the questions? You can very easily filter by questions only. And for each question, you have the, uh, the, the volume and the intent, which is cool because here for um, I had um, coffee roaster as a very broad term before. And now people, I mean, I can see uh, people search for how to roast coffee beans or um, what is uh, blonde uh, roast coffee? So this is really cool because if you are um, a coffee roasting uh, company, like maybe a physical location, like somewhere, or maybe you sell roasted coffee um, online, if you now create content that incorporates all these like questions, you can not only trigger these answer boxes or feature snippets, you can also get customer customers to your website because they're interested in something way before they even make a purchase. As you see, for example, is dark roast coffee stronger? Hey, just create content, answer the question, and maybe you have a, a happy customer um, for life. And like I said, you can also like filter by uh, other intents. So this was informational. This is commercial intent. And you see here, uh, these queries are a little bit different. And there's one also one cool thing in SEMrush. We do also have like... Um, intents that, that tend into like information and or commercial. So we do not have a binary thing like only informational or only commercial. Often uh, keyword queries are even like tending towards like information or commercial. That's something we even offer in that kind of sense, which is actually really cool. And if you are very serious about the business and you wanna you know sell your products or services, researching what people search, uh, researching what people kind of search throughout the customer journey is actually uh, one of the most important things you should do to create content. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, there's one other cool thing. Um, like I said, you should really think about the, the, the um, customer and what keeps them up um, at night during the whole um, like journey, how to research the product. So here, this example for uh, is for guitar. And 
I knew I know many friends that that wanted to play a guitar that had in mind to play guitar or that played a guitar in in their youth, and they might might search for things like how to tune a guitar. So um, if you are a guitar shop and you are selling like like uh, good entry level, but also like the super expensive um, electric guitars, um, electronic guitars. Oh, I don't know. Shit. Um, the the thing is. You shouldn't only focus on like like um, guitars in, in that moment, or if you are like a physical location. Uh, Google knows, for example, also uh, where the searcher is. When people search for where to buy a guitar, this is transactional intent, but this is really close to the transaction. And you see in a search room, it's just one thousand people searching versus how to tune a guitar, eighteen thousand people searching. So it would be a much better thing if you are an expert anyway and you have a guitar shop. Or guitar website, and you know how to tune a guitar, and many other things around this topic. You should create a content, and if you're an expert, Google will appreciate uh, your content anyway, because Google is looking for like expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. It's the uh, eat concept, and that would be even a pretty good idea to have that content on the website. Um, yeah, let's continue here. Um, like I said, um, you can even search for different intents in this, this moment here. It's like informational and transactional, but there's one other thing I wanted to cover at the end is uh, the keyword difficulty, which you're also going to get in um, Wix's uh, back backend very soon. And it's cool, why? Because if you know that there's like um, high search volume on, on many different keywords, but the, the difficulty potentially very high to kind of like compete for high search volume um, topics. You can even use the keyword difficulty in that, in that moment uh, easy um, to start with some more easier to kind of like um, entry level uh, keywords. Yeah, um, so we're almost at the end uh, on my presentation at least. So it's important that you get the foundations right. Um, so the keyword intent mapping is, is very important for you that uh, in your content strategy that you know that based on the customer journey, you provide the relevant content. Please do not try to have holistic content for every kind of topic. You should not try to kind of like create um, how to tune a guitar and have the products on the same page. You, you can have the products on a page, but you should not create a shop page with only like large amount of content and, and hope that you can cover everything at the same time. So please be very diligent on um, what is necessary for informational and uh, for commercial transactional content. So get your uh, foundations right. So for information searches, uh, again, uh, these are typically queries where people search for a specific question or general information. This is something you should really leverage to grow your brand awareness. Uh, by, for example, writing blog posts or other sorts of information, educational content. I should definitely include FAQs on your page. Please do not forget to uh, use um, schema FAQ, FAQ markups. And this will really help you to kind of like attract a lot of top of the funnel traffic. Then for navigation queries, um, even if you think like, okay, when people search for my brand, uh, when people search for, I don't know, something around my brand, my brand, like, I don't know, like the login page or some other page, Please be aware of that it's very easy to optimize uh, branded queries, but often at the same time, um, these large brands or brands in general have an issue to understand like, okay, um, there's some sort of queries people have around my brand, but your, if the, your page is not optimized, maybe an affiliate or some, someone else is going to outrank you even for these more navigational queries. So please also consider navigation queries in your um, keyword and content strategy. And it's, again, easy to rank for, for them if you are the brand anyway. Then we have, um, again, commercial queries. This is uh, what people typically uh, use um, if they want to investigate a certain brand or service or products. Um, this is something you should use in your content strategy um, when you, for example, create product comparisons or typically uh, listicle pages. Uh, listicle pages are not just for products. It could be also around like the top 10 destinations um, in Germany or the, the, the best uh, electric family vans or something. So it's, it's really like more longer form content uh, where people uh, ex expect some more in-depth information, but really closer to the product. And then we have uh, transactional queries 
This is typically where searchers already know what they want. Uh, they know um, um, maybe even where they want it. And this is even something where it's highly um, like recommended to also run PPC ads at the same time, because this, this is really what Google typically says as one plus one equals three, because if it's very close to the transaction, you should have a good content strategy to have like good organic rankings, but at the same time, you can even capture like good traffic um, close to the transaction through PPC. Um, this is my last slide. Um, so why? <laughs> I mean, I'm a data guy, so I, I can talk about that kind of stuff like for hours. But um, Google just recently made a, a core update. So on uh, May 25th, they started. And I think two weeks later, um, Danny Sullivan announced they finished with the core update. But a core update um, has different influences. And I, I thought, like, let's take a look at uh, what kind of keyword intent has had the highest influence, the highest volatility during the Google core update. So I took a pretty long time frame between May 25th and June 21st. And um, interesting is really that um, informational queries here, they had the highest volatility. So from my perspective, I can only imagine that, especially on the, on the informational side, it's higher search volume. It's often that there's a much larger variety of different offerings that Google really tried to readjust what are the uh, best sources. I definitely have seen that uh, for many keywords where typically brands had good rankings, Google now started to rank like more informational uh, sources. I definitely have seen on many high search volume, um, like like really short head terms at Wikipedia again, like like gained rankings and, and YouTube at the same time, which is very interesting. Um, for transactional commercial queries, we also had a pretty high uh, volatility and maybe to explain volatility super quick. So volatility means that uh, in, in my case, more than 50% of the rankings shifted during the time frame of May 25th and June 21st, more than 50%. This is what I consider right here volatility. And then the, the last one, navigational, they even also have a pretty high volatility of 40%, even if you think like when people search for a brand or for a certain action they, they want to complete and they know what actually the, the result they're looking for, even there at a 40%. Um, volatility. Why is it important? So first, it's important for you to know that there's constant change at Google. So even if you create content, you see that your competitors, they, they're outranking you and you're maybe not even found on the first page of Google because of the volatility. And if you make a good job and if you kind of like have experts or you're even expert writing the content, if you maintain the content, like create the assets, uh, maybe create like, like videos even or create what people really want, based on like the high volatility is always a good chance that um, on, on a regular basis, even with like a big update, um, Google is going to consider you as a much more important source and you will start ranking on a um, first page or even like in the first couple of rankings. Yeah, thank you very much for the, um, for the time and the attention. I, I know that sometimes uh, the topic, I'm, I'm going too fast through all the slides, but that's why we have the, the Q&A now, and I'm really looking forward to all the questions. Thank you. That was really great. Thank you so much. I, I really enjoyed all of it. And, and I love seeing the whiz round with um, all of the SEMrush stuff because SEMrush is such a great tool. Um, there's, so, there's so many parts of it. Um, I have a question, Morty, or do you mind if I jump in, jump straight in? Okay, um, so so you talked a lot about about search intent, and you shared the the example from Wix um, using uh, using. Well, obviously, you talked a lot about search intent, but you shared the example from Wix talking about um, ranking for a few different kinds of intent on the same on the same page. One of the things that I thought was great about that example was that was the format was that for the different kinds of intents, there were different the the content was formatted differently. Um, I wonder if you could speak a little bit to that and, and, and maybe you could talk a little bit about how SEMrush also segments for that um, within, within the tool. Yes, 100%. I mean, the, the, the thing is that uh, Google is, 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 is pretty aware of what the user wants. And, and nowadays people are very, like they don't have like a high attention span. So they, they wanna get to the results super fast. 
So Google even like sends the user very often to the paragraph they're looking for, even if, if you have a long page. And what uh, I found really good at what Wix did is, um, so you, you've seen like there were different types of assets. So often they had like, like images to explain certain things. You had like lists, especially when people look for structured content and they want to have a list, like a step-by-step -step guide or some sort of like bullet point list. This is something you should provide and you can use information in SEMrush in a way that you look at uh, different SERP features that Google is triggering. So for example, when uh, you look at the keyword, we also show you in SEMrush that um, uh, there are like uh, image results, video results, um, there are related questions. So there are direct answer boxes. So there's a lot of like, like rich information in SEMrush that gives you just looking at the keyword, good understanding of um, what kind of um uh results are triggered you know of course still if you if you want to create content you can't just like like start to, to produce the content you really have to understand what does the user wants and often it's maybe something different you have in mind right so with in living in the TikTok, uh like like era now i i, I would almost say uh, people need short form content they need it super fast and if you if you only provide uh, long form a content and just purely text that's maybe even something where you're missing out uh, your potential future consumer so you have to really think about what kind of format are you using and i mean we all know uh, that google is is very good in machine learning they announced this um a mom concept um i think last year it was right where google is able to kind of like uh create the connections between different sorts of um, asset classes between like videos and images and text that Google understands like the relationship between all of them. So that, 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 that means like if, if you're missing out because you only provide, I don't know, only images or only text or only video and the user has some uh, different uh, like expectations, uh, you're maybe not being considered anymore as like the, the, the best ranking. Or the yeah, it's really... What's really interesting about what you're talking about, what you're saying right, right, right now is, and it goes back to the stat that you share that most of the searches being done and the volume of searches being done is around informational keywords. So how to do something, best ways to do something. And you have Google getting really smarter, as you mentioned, and that means that how Google understands what someone's looking for, even within the intent of informational, let's say, for example, uh, it's around car insurance. So you have things, uh, how to buy car insurance, which policy should I buy? comparing different car insurance policies, all sorts of informational content. And I think that as Google gets smarter at what it's able to do and how it's able to break down a topic, let's say the topic of car insurance and all the different types of informational content that it's possible for a person to be looking for, that Google is going to be get better at showing those different pieces of content. So it's not just enough to know, yeah, I need to create informational content, but what kind of informational content should I be creating? Should I be creating a, a how-to guide or a comparison or, or whatnot? I was wondering what you thought about that. I mean, this is really like, like, like a, like a good, good point, you know, often, often I have tunnel vision. So I, I'm, I'm an e-commerce website. I know like I have good products and I have good prices, but I have tunnel vision on what the user actually wants. And um, this is this is where keyword research, looking at the intents, like brings a little bit outside this like, like um, bubble um, because people often have many different touch points until they make a purchase, right? So Google made lots of studies and they definitely found a high correlation that the more expensive a product is, the more kind of like really kind of like is valuable and at the same time expensive, the more searches you make. And they had one really cool study uh, for a family that, that booked a family vacation in, in like Disney World like a couple of years ago that was a study. And they, they found out that um, they made more than 100 searches um, around the whole topic, like booking this family vacation in Disney World to in the end, like make the purchase, which is really interesting because they looked up like what kind of point of interest are there? Uh, what kind of hotels are there? Uh, they looked at the things they can do in, in the area. So it wasn't just like one search and they made the purchase. Uh, they made over hundred searches, which is something people often forget that um, when they create content and often, I mean, this is really interesting. I, I was in a board meeting uh, not that long ago where uh, there was asked like, okay, I mean, we have all these like, pages here, but the conversion rate is so low. It was about listicle pages, so with low conversion rate, but 
So what do we do with these pages, you know? So because often decision makers, they just look purely at certain KPIs, I don't know, conversion rate or deals or whatever. And they don't really look at like how the customer journey works. And if you, if you start to get the customer very early in the customer journey, you can do something with these people. You, you can create more brand awareness about your products and, and people maybe come back, but to a different page so that then it's more like a problem of attribution. And, and, and you know, and that, that's something, uh, that's why I put in this, this guitar example here, because if you just purely sell like uh, guitars in your online shop, but you don't write about how to kind of like tune a guitar or how to, I don't know, select the best one, uh, you're missing out like a big audience. Yeah, and I think you mentioned expertise, authority, and trust, and that kind of content builds trust. If they know that you know how to tune a guitar, then you probably know about other stuff. So it's worth building that building that in. We agree. Well, yeah, I'm just gonna say it's a, it's a good point. Just forget search engines for a minute, but your your own users when they come to your site, they find you whatever keyword they show up at your website, and they see that you've covered the basis all around whatever it is around guitar buying and guitar playing. That creates one is, you know, the funnel is messy, which is really, Marcus, what you're saying. People just don't go, okay, well, I have the informational content. Now I'll, now I'll go and buy it. It's really, they research, you know, think about yourself. You research, you go in, you go out, you come back, you think about it for a week, you percolate about it, you come back, you maybe you buy it. No, I'm going to research more. That's what, you know, so the mess, the funnel is messy. And, and at the, at the same time, if you're able to show the user that each point during their journey, you have the answer to their question. They're far more likely to buy from you. Absolutely. Yes. So um, we do have a lot of questions. Uh, yes. in, in the I, I was just going to say I want to take some questions before we get into the questions. Actually, about the the uh, the particular insights that Marcus shared. There, there were I noticed there were a lot of questions about the integration. So I'm just going to share my screen really quickly again and quickly answer some questions or try to answer some questions that I saw about the integration with Semrush that is upcoming and. Don't know why that's not loading. Okay. Um, so for starters, the SEMrush integration that you're going to have inside of Wix is free. You do not have to pay for it. There's a certain amount of searches you'll have per day. I don't remember the exact quote off the top of my head, but it should certainly be enough to help you get set up. So I'll just run through a quick example. Let's say on your homepage, you want to talk about, oh, just say, oh, you know, I don't know, um, microphones for podcasting. That's what your website does. You might want to search for microphones for podcasting and see what kind of keyword options Semrush gives you, how often people are searching for those terms related to podcast microphones, how difficult it is to rank, and obviously the intent. Or you might want to compare that to, well, USB microphones. Maybe people don't search for podcast microphone. They don't call it that. They just search for USB microphone. So you can run another keyword search inside of Wix using Semrush data and see, okay, well, only 10 people are searching every month for podcast microphone, but a million people, just making this number up, are searching for USB microphone, and it's, you know, medium difficulty to rank. So that's, whoops, apologies. That's the kind of data that you'll have inside of there. Now, SEMrush offers a freemium model. So you can go from here, and you'll have access to do this from the Wix dashboard to go into SEMrush proper. So SEMrush is an independent SEO data platform. They have a free trial. I recommend you check it out. After the free trial expires, by the way, there is a freemium model where you can keep exploring keyword and all other sites of data information through their freemium model. So yes, you'll have the access, the initial access to the foundational information inside of Wix. You will be able to use SEMrush's freemium model that they offer in general inside of the actual SEMrush platform, which you'll have access to via the Wix platform where you can explore the uh, the keyword data and the possibilities just a little bit more. So I just really wanted to share that before we get into the actual questions related to the uh, the webinar that Marcus just uh, presented to us. Give me just one quick second while I pull up my questions. I apologize. I don't remember them all by heart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now let's start with, you know, the first question maybe let's start with is, um, what's a good example of how a small business can target users with keyword intent? That's a really great question. Um, I mean, the, 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 the first question is that, is it a, like a physical business, like with a physical location? Um, so that, that's important because um, people not only search for near me, like, I don't know, best guitar store near me or best 
cache style, style on NME. Also, Google, without the, user, the usage of NME, Google knows the location, especially on your mobile phones. So if just people searching for a guitar store, the NME information is important. So if you are a small business and you have a physical location, you should uh, be sure that you use address information on your page. You should use schema.org like, uh, to make sure Google understands you're, you're like a um, a certain in a certain location, and that's it's actually super easy. So then, if if you if uh, you also offer like services outside just a certain area, uh, you should create content um, like really based on what we have presented before. You should think about the customer journey from the beginning. If you sell flowers, you should think about. Um, I mean, if you're not uh, like like sending your flowers like on on a like like to all states in the US or like <laughs> internationally, you should. Think about like what people search more probably around your area. But let's let's say you ship on on a broader scale internationally. Even you should really start like at the top. Like what are people searching? What are their pain points in the customer journey? And this is how you should start like a keyword strategy. You should not start writing just content right away for the search first keywords because for Google it's all about a connected topic. So that is like semantically related. So that that means. If you even make a proper keyword research and you start writing lots of different types of pages, it's often the case that these things belong together. That's what I that's what I call holistic content. That, that you put things together, maybe as a, as a, like a string, like in a, like how in, in a certain order. Um, and then, of course, if you sell products or services or, or whatever, you should really try to understand like how can you come to the point that. Um, like uh, uh, leading the user towards a certain um, product or service makes makes sense. Or you maybe just write two things. I mean, I've seen companies being incredibly successful creating a good blog, becoming an authority in a certain space without even uh, like super promoting all their products. It was just natural content they created because out of their expertise and they really created uh, like a good brand around all these like informational educational content that without the necessity of like hyper promoting all the, the products that's maybe even the, the better thing to do so this is something and then there's one thing i really have to talk about because of uh maybe lack of expertise or uh maybe lack of time like like really like thinking about seo often people trying to create good content even like good people they try to like like underestimate the the complexity and the time they need to spend in like research and structuring the content and they often believe like okay if i have like just a few hundred or maybe a few few thousand words that will be good enough but content is something you really have to care about you have to maintain you have to update the content on a regular basis the producing one thing uh once and pushing it online is not enough so if you really want to be relevant in a certain space you have to make sure that you maintain and update the content on a regular basis that you add information that you add kind of like refresh the content when something is outdated so this is really important and that's something people often underestimate so content is really an investment so that that's i mean i, I mean it and if you do it right then i mean look at wix's uh, homepage ranking for many different terms high search volume terms this is something that you will earn over time when when you do it right and I yeah. think you mentioned pain points there a few times. And I think for small businesses, that's a really good one to think about. So for a small business, you're very close to your customers for a, very, a lot of the times. And it can mean that that they ask you the same question a lot. <laughs> and so you know their pain well, points because the, the, they is, tell you. Yes. <laughs> this is really a good point. I, I, I Seriously, I mean, all the small businesses, especially ones that have like maybe like a direct connection to the customers because they go to your shop or because you do customer service like like um, yourself, um, you should write everything down. This is like the, the best source is your customer. You know, it's not just Google keyword tool or like Samrush Magic keyword tool. It's not. It's like your customer is the best source, and that, that 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 means like I mean I've seen in the medical space the best content is written by doctors, right? Not by someone writing about some sort of like sickness. It's like doctors, they can write about stuff. And it's the same in, in every other industry. Yeah, absolutely. And I think and, you can use that information as your seed for your, for your wider keywords um, to make sure that, so the information that you get from your customers, you can use as the seed word for your keyword research to get like really extra top-notch content. So 100%. Let's go to a question, I'm sorry. Let's go to a question, sorry, um, from Lizzie Jane. 
If we go with speaking of keywords, by the way, if we uh, go with the common keywords, does that mean we are basically joining millions of people offering that keyword? So how do we stand out from competitors using common keywords? It's a very good question. Chris, I'm going to throw it to you first. Um, so what I would say, what if, if, as a small business, if you're a small business, I think the easiest thing to do is to go to Google and enter in that keyword. So for instance, we've been talking about a lot about guitars. So um, let's say it was Guitar Shop. Um, you would enter Guitar Shop. There are millions and millions of guitar shops all over the world. And if you go to Google, they will actually filter you and they will start to ask you more questions about that. Same thing happens within the SEMrush um, tool. So you enter Guitar Shop and, they will, and there will be smaller terms within that. And you want to sort of you, what, you, what you want ideally with keyword research is you want to be a big fish in a small pond. So you need to find the best pond for yourself um, and also the most relevant pond um, where all of the fish are your friends. No. <laughs> so so you want to make sure that you've got that you've got keywords that work. So so you want to filter it down a little bit more so that you're not just saying guitar shop, let's say a guitar shop in your town or like guitar shop like vintage guitar shop or, um, or like, you know, great value guitar shop. Let's say you sell really, really reasonably priced guitars, but just know what, what is the special thing about your business and try to tailor your keyword to go with that and make that your sort of core, core term. That's what I would say. You, you can't get around your own identity and what you do and what you offer. That is like a foundational core of, of everything. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, well, and, here, should I, yeah. I'm sorry, Marcus, go ahead. No, I just I just wanted to make a reference. I mean, when when people are interested in running, they also do not start to run a marathon the next day, right? So they start slow. I mean, they do training and they maybe start like with uh, like a three mile run the, right, a week later. So this is really how you should see content as well. You should not start with high search volume, hyper competitive keywords. You should start small and see like the progress, and then kind of like become better over time. There's always this question out there in the SEO world. There's a zero uh, search volume keyword, right? Meaning no one's searching for this, which there's no such thing as that really. Should I even bother writing about it or targeting that topic? In my opinion, you can tell me if you disagree, is yes, you need to, the search engine and with your audience as well, you need to build trust. They need to understand this is who you are. This is what you do. Uh, this, is, this is the content that we can rely on you for. And if you start off writing for those longer tail, longer kind of more specific kind of topics and keywords, you slowly build up that trust, you build up that authority, you build up that expertise in the eyes of your users and with search engines, and then you can write and rank for a more competitive keyword. So I most definitely would disagree with you. Don't, zero is search volume, don't write about it. No, start, maybe start there. That's a good place to get going and build up your, uh, your authority and your, your EAT, as we like to call it. So a uh, quick question, should I be creating content to target every intent Google shows on the SERP for all of my keywords? Very ambitious. Chris, I see you shaking your head. Hey, maybe Chris, you should start. <laughs> I would say not, not everything all at once. Um, and Mark, Marcus used Wix as an example, and Wix is actually really good at this. So topic clusters are something that people talk about. Um, so think about your topic. Um, what, what if you look up, if you look up like blogging or blogs or things like that, Wix has like some blogs on blogging and blogs on 120 different ways to make a blog, different blog topics. And we, and so, and, and so you're covering lots of different parts of the intent. I would say one of the things that's great about SEO is that like it's, and, and Marcus talked about this before, it's not a one shot deal. You can write your blog now and then you can go back and you can add stuff in later. So like maybe it's best guitars, best guitars best electric guitars and maybe the Fender Stratocaster is the best one right now then maybe like this other one makes this great new upgrade and actually it's not the best anymore and you can go back and you can update that and and make the new guitar the best guitar um or you know different laws will change or different different uh, other things will change and you need to update it and that's great Google loves that because they already know your page they already know that it was good content and then you can say that you've updated and then they know not only was this good before but oh my gosh they're keeping on top of it and it looks great and it's you know it's still good so this is this is something that people are looking after um so i think don't don't do it all at once like like marcus said like it's you know it's a marathon not a sprint like get in there do a bit now do some more um and just just keep going <laughs> yeah i mean i think this is really like how you should do it right i mean you, you should if, if you start 
with uh, like keywords with a lower search volume and less less competition it's also like super exciting to see your content showing up it's it's also something that's like uh, pretty motivational and and what you said like updating content is is one of the things i've seen most companies struggling with because it's like if you don't see it anymore it's like out of your mind and if 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 you see content creation as a business you only think about new content and i've seen companies being most successful when they do maintain and care about content that was even created like a couple of years ago but like you said with the fender stratocaster they updated and then maybe they can kind of like be the the most relevant source you know and I think we talked about formats as well. Another good good way to look at um to, to change the intent or to add intent to 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 a web page is like let's say you had a web a web page that was all about how to tune a guitar and it was a written bit of content and um and you talked about the SERP volatility there with different intents. So one of the things that changed in the last algorithm was there was a lot more video that was present. So let's say you had this blog that was written written about how to tune a guitar. You could go back to that blog and add a video about how to tune a guitar. And then you would be adding more intent and you'd be able to show in more features. And, and it would still be the same blog um, and would still have that ranking stuff, but you'd be able to satisfy customers in a, in a, in a different way, which is what it's all about really. And that's, by the way, a great way if you want to understand how Google's looking at intent. So if you, if you Google something for like how to play guitar and you see there's images and videos and all sorts of different kind of media formats, then you know that Google looks at this and says, hey, the intent here is for the person to, when you're writing, if you're creating content, well, they want video content. Or if they're searching how to make meatloaf, they want an image there. So look what Google's doing. That'll help you clue you into what the wider intent is. So Barbara Danielson asks, how can I, this is just up Marcus's alley, right? How can I find out what people who find my site are searching for? Um, I mean, this is really where you can like fully use like the full spectrum of SEMrush. So if, if you put in your, your landing page, SEMrush will tell you uh, for what kind of keyword queries your landing page has already found. Uh, for what kind of search volume and what your ranking is. So this is really a pretty good starting point. And from there, you can start to look at your competition and do the same. So what I often do is, so if I think about one keyword, so for example, how to tune a guitar, I, I, I take the first ranking and I, I click on the rankings um, on the keywords that this page also ranks for. And it's often like hundreds or maybe sometimes thousands of keywords. So out of one C keyword, looking at the landing page that ranks the best, I see what uh, other uh, keywords this page is also ranking for. Then I can look at intent again. I see, okay, top of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. So this type of uh, research is very important because otherwise people get stuck with just a word, a keyword, but in the end, it's like a, a topic which is much broader and more holistic. So, and, 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 and if you don't know what your page is already known for, you can also go, uh, not having access to SEMrush, you can also go to Google Search Console uh, and take a look there because Search Console also gives you a lot of um, pretty good information for free. So I wanna to get to one more question. We're gonna squeeze this one in because I think it's a really good question from Anna. Um, about keyword ideas and searches, isn't this just a reflection of us being in the pandemic for two years and now the trend around whatever keyword will massively change as people are, go back to normality? I mean, I, I totally see where this question is coming from, especially during the pandemic. I mean, all these like like websites like Pinterest or like like uh, all other DIY pages, they really kind of like like had a huge growth and, and especially in like for searches and popularity. But I, I do believe like like the, 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 the laziness and, and the knowing that Google is going to provide me any answer of what I want, really. I mean, seriously, um, people are not going to go away from like idea searches or best of searches because they know uh, that Google or maybe another search in as well is just making a pretty good job in organizing information for me. So that's 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 why I don't think it's going back to uh, normality. And you can always use like Google Trends to kind of like challenge, like, hey, is this really going away? You can use Google Trends to see if there's like a like a, a decline in, in, in searches. And I doubt that idea searches in general are, are going to de decline in the future. And, and I think also people, you know, Google is a, you know, it's, it's a, it's a two way thing. So, so Google, Google will serve results and they'll say, we have this result for you. And people will go, I don't like that. Or, or, 
<laughs> or people or people will say, oh, I really, really like all those Pinterest searches, or I really like having lots of lots of videos for that. And Google sees, oh, people like this, we'll give them more of that. And I think like within the last year, for instance, Google got much better at understanding video. So so that you know they they're able to auto add tra um, chapters or able to add different sections and do different parts, and so that will change what what where things show on the SERP, um, and that will that will cause volatility further down because like previously they were only able to index certain um, text in a certain way, and now they can read read um, videos in a different way as well. So so as the technology changes, that also can affect different rankings and things, which is another reason why it's a good to good to have a mix of content in your content. Yeah, and content is constantly changing and it's people, the way people look for content and what they're looking for very slowly sometimes, but it, it's constantly changing. And think back, I'll just end on this point, you know, 20 years ago, people were searching for music. They were searching about CDs, right? How many people are searching about CDs or cassettes anymore at this point, right? So Only to sell them. <laughs> what do I do with them? I still found, I found a whole bunch of CDs together. I don't want to do with them. But the way people const the way people look for things, what they're looking for, it's going to change over time. And that's just the way content is. On that happy note, thank you so much for joining us. I am Marcus, by the way, thank you. That was amazing and wonderful. I really appreciate your time. Crystal as well, of course. Thank you. Um, yeah. We're back again next month with another webinar for you. We're talking about your homepage and SEO for your homepage with Crystal and myself. Um, you can look for more SEO content on Wix.com slash SEO slash learn. So that's Wix.com slash SEO slash learn. Learn more about keywords and intent and all sorts of great SEO information and check out our next coming webinar. You'll also get an email with this webinar recording as well. So not to worry. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. And thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, too. Bye-bye.